according to the government, COVID is done. And for that, I am thankful because my God, I was getting bored. The beaches were empty, mate. So when I, when I was doing my hectic stuff, no one could even see it. And that really made me feel pointless. Nick did a jumpy off the, the thingy. And for I read the Kite World article and I found it very funny that when he went to climb up it to get up onto the actual crane, they put the ladder on the wrong side. And, um, and then I realized that they had mounted the ladder on the wrong side of the, of, the, of the crane. And at that point, he must have just had two options. One, just whinge loads. No, that bloody thing is in the wrong place. How am I meant to get up? How am I meant to get up there now and that you've put it in the wrong place? What do you expect me to do? You could use your kite. No, I bloody can't use my kite. I need the steps. Okay, you drive the boat, I drive the kite. Okay, that's not shut up. Or, I was thinking, he could have shimmied up like a koala. Yeah, just wrap his legs round and then kind of just, like... I don't know why he didn't use his initiative and do the second one. But instead he must have done the first one, must he? I don't know, how would they have changed it? Would they have rotated the whole crane? Or rotated the... Did they rotate the entire ship? People probably got really seasick from that, just for his jump. He shouldn't have put them through that, really. The, 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 the Tarifa models, they've had it. They're busy, busy for them, so... Good. Good to see them out hard at work. Or, oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Amazing. Imagine thinking, yeah, I'll put that on the internet, that'll be good. Yeah. Nah, no one will laugh at that. No. The GKA, uh, their latest ploy to pretend everything's fine, is the distance battle. Everyone is very excited about it. The GKA top riders will face each other in a new online format. You would think that it being a kiteboarding trick competition, that the people might be picked on the basis of their ability. Vote for your wild card of choice. Get the neighbours involved. Get the family involved. Hey, get the dog involved. Of course not, you idiot. It's a popularity contest. Duh. If we make a voting thing, then the pros who need the votes are going to be shouting loud and not clear, but loud on the internet. And then we will get all of the clicks and uh, we will not look like we are struggling to exist. And then uh, came the waterfall of votes and it, I felt like I was standing under the waterfall but it was a really big one and was just getting pummeled into the ground, telling, being constantly told to vote for someone I didn't even know who they were. But then someone obviously worked out how to manipulate the, the waterfall because <laughs> they, the GKA eventually pulled it down saying that no, someone has done horrible cheating. Who the culprit was that was cheating is we don't know, but the GKA probably know, and I wish they'd bloody said who it was so we could all be horrible to them. Imagine how good it would be. They have described the cheating as a intensive abnormality. Are they describing a person there? Because they, are they? Is it Jesse Richmond? He's quite intense and a bit weird. So, is it him? I can't imagine him cheating though, he's got, he's got a kid. It's not good for the kid, is it? The kid would grow up and be like, did you cheat to get into distance battles? So the freestyle is gonna be the pro riders at their home spots or wherever they've got stuck doing an eight minute heat. So we're gonna have Bebe in his own lagoon, in the Bebe lagoon, going absolutely mad for eight minutes, yeah fueled by the annoyance of losing last year he's gonna be so angry and he's just gonna be unleashing and Mika can you imagine Mika at her own home spot what's gonna happen surely she'll do a double handle pass the second woman to ever do it and she'll bloody do it in a competition so yeah very exciting very very exciting and Jesse what about Jesse Jesse in Maui on his home turf he becomes this like different sort of beast he's in the pro pool bit you know the bit with the rocks 
and he just does the weirdest stuff that no one ever thought was existed, but he's doing it. Like Tom Bridge sort of stuff, but with kite loops and just madness. Once, on a separate topic, once I saw Jesse's brother, Sean, who is maybe better than Jesse. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, but maybe. I saw him do a, a transition, just a transition, not even a back roll transition. A normal transition. I saw Sean Richmond. Did I say I don't care. I saw Sean Richmond. I had to say that real slowly so I could do it. Yeah. I saw him do a transition once and he literally went like 10 meters upwind during the transition. I could not believe it. I turned around. I was like, did you just see? He literally just bent the wind window. I don't know how he's done it. And no one else saw it. But Sean did because he did it. So, Sean, did did you do? You know you did, and I know you did, and no one's going to believe it. But you, what can you do? I do worry, though, that surely they're not going to do it live. Don't do it live, GKA. That sounds like a technical nightmare. Live competition, live commentary, live interviews, live scoring, combining the world's best in a way never seen before. Poor Joe, that's going to be a nightmare situation for him. He's probably going to have to hold his microphone with two hands just to stop himself from shaking. The month of June was dominated almost entirely with Black Lives Matter news and the coverage. I thought, this is the month where kiteboarders, pro kiters can truly show how tone deaf they are. But annoyingly, they were quite well behaved. Like they did share the black square and they did talk about it and they did get everyone thinking. So then that I left me thinking like, well, what am I going to say about that now? Because I thought they were all going to be dicks. And then to the shock of everyone, including myself, if I'm honest, I bloody did something for someone else. The missus just described it as utter madness. I was worried at the start because it was going to use need some of my work ethic, which is not good. But then I just kept on doing it. I've decided that instead of just whinging loads, that we should do something good. So I bloody am trying to work with youth groups and get them through kite lessons somehow, somewhere. And that's what I'm doing. And I, if you like the sound of that, I encourage you to... One, read the thing we put up, and two, to email me, and we will, we bloody, we'll talk it through. One of my favourite bits of it all was looking at the statues, and thinking, as they're getting torn down, and thinking, they even looked like dickheads. <laughs> like, look at them. What is even worse is that they themselves, the people, or their family, would have been like, Perfect. I love that design. Let's get it up. Yeah, no, I think I'm... What I've done is, like, mint. I should definitely have a statue. Yeah. There was a lot of kiteboarders that didn't post to the black square. And we... That leaves us thinking, Ah, that's because they're donating to the cause silently and really making a lot of effort. But it also makes us think, Maybe they don't give a shit. What is so funny about the people that didn't post <laughs> is that they would have been like, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not posting that. That's controversial. It's like the least controversial thing, isn't it? It's going, are you racist? And you're going, no. It's not controversial to say no, is it? <laughs> but you're inadvertently saying yes. By accident, you've said yes by not posting and not caring. So... You've really shot yourself in the foot there. Like when this whiskey company used David Beckham to promote it with the song Left Hand Free by Alt-J, which everyone knows is about wanking. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. When I'm having a bad day, I go and watch that advert and I'm like, oh yeah, people are shit. 
So yeah, they really shot themselves in the... No, the face. They got themselves straight in the face. No, actually even worse. They accidentally shot their mum in the face. Not even a gun. Something more horrible than a bullet. Like a turd. They've shot their mum in the face with a turd. So the pro kite boarders did... They did fairly well. We'll give it to them. Well done to them. But guys, don't worry. There's someone that, that took the reins of being tone deaf. Oh, she did it well. Let's have a clap. It's JK Rowling, everyone. That's it. That's right. It's the, uh, everyone's favorite childhood book, teenage fiction sort of author. That's right. She took the BLM movement time to have a go at trans people. And then, in a shocking outbreak of principles, Harry Potter himself jumped to the rescue. Incredible. Incredible stuff from the not young anymore Daniel Radcliffe finally doing some good work in his life. Those early Harry Potter films, if you watched them recently, they're so bad. When he was 11 and not very good at acting, that was kind of fine because you were like, he's 11. But then he became old and he still wasn't good, but he was still there. And then you have to be like, oh. And what is most mental about that is, imagine being so untalented that even practicing something doesn't make you better. That's mad, isn't it? If you think about it like that. <laughs> bloody, what's his bloody name? Thingy, get hard with Mike. He, uh, he's, he does good tutorials. He, he annoys me greatly, but he does do good tutorials, which also annoys me. I keep thinking, why didn't I explain that like that? Damn. His latest one on the preload pop. Preload pop. He shows you how to do it, but he doesn't explain really why you should do it, other than saying... And the short answer is gravity. I could have done with a bit more detail than one word. So, you preload pop because one, it's quicker to do the whole process, like you can release your edge quicker doing that. You're cutting out the first bit of the carbs, you're just being like, nah, we're doing the carb now. And with the nature of it being quicker, it's also more aggressive, which means, folks, more loading up of the edge and then even more of the pops. And it bloody increases your speed, doesn't it? Because you're not touching anything. No water friction, mate. Fuck off, water. I also think there's something to be said about it being a bit psychological. Because you're like, I'm going to go and do the most epic pop before my thing. <laughs> and then instead of just carving upwind like a lazy windsurfer, you're bloody jumping and then doing it even bigger and better and harder. And the pole, the dreaded pole that had all pro kiteboarders quivering in their foot straps. I was absolutely fuming to finish in 10th place. Pfft, as if there's nine other people more important than me. Quick, just public service announcement. I know I'm kind of in the habit of telling everyone what to do at the moment. But we can all do this one, even the ones that are lazy and racist. So, what I'm envisaging is a world where no one is doing scary talk about Megaloops. Can you imagine sitting in a car park and looking at the wind and stuff without someone going, Are you really gonna loop? Or, nah, my back, like it really hurts my back. Or, last time I did it, I snapped my face. <laughs> I want to live in a world where no one is telling anyone else how scary loops are and putting them off. So what I've come up with is, is quite a good system. Basically, when someone starts saying something lame, you just go, ah! until they stop. It's pretty simple. You just repeat that until they do shut up or they leave. And that's the same thing. And Kiahi did his surfing with a kite masterpiece. Even me, who is not interested in that at all, found it vaguely interesting. It seemed like it captured the imaginations of actual surfers, who for a long time I think had probably laughed in our faces. But now they were eating their words and saying things like, That's quite impressive what he's done. 
Look at that. He's he's doing it. I mean, he could just be surfing, but he's doing it with a kite. And no, we still don't know why he's not just surfing. Now for the most exciting part of it all, the hottest shit of the thing. Who is this month's winner? I think it's got to be the Tarifa models. They what a what a hard day's work they put in. Man, that looked difficult walking in a straight line with three of them. Man, how did they do it? We'll never know. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. That was dire. What? <laughs> I would have given it to one of these two blokes who have already done a Mob Seven. That usually would be the kind of the you know the level of hottest shit of the thing. But this month has just been a mad month. It could also be this. Martin Hager, look at that. Look how big that bloody thing is. That's a bloody big boogie loop and the heli loop at the end. Now for the hottest shit of the thing. This, it's bloody Coco doing a bloody bloody and he's has never done, There's no one's ever done that. And he did, did it, so good on him for doing it. Does that make sense? Perfect. Like he was the first person to do a front blind mode to blind whatever that is and now he's gone and done that I literally I can't even get my head around what he's done there like when I first saw that I was so confused I had to sit down just thinking about mummy rap makes me want to cry a bit because it's so hectic but he's managed to do it I remember Craig Cunningham saying on the Kitesurf 365 podcast that Jean Maria was doing some stuff that no one else could do and I was like like what I haven't seen anything and I think he was maybe talking about this. That's enough of all this shit. Thank you to me as always. Goodbye. <laughs>